praise him because um, he is just someone I've I've admired and and really appreciated for so many years. We've done a lot of things together. We've traveled together. We've uh, done talks together, and um, I learn so much from him every time I'm with him, and I appreciate him a great deal. And I know that we're all going to have the chance to appreciate and celebrate and learn from him today as well. So if you're just dialing in, just type your name and uh, who is on the call, type your name, where you're dialing in from into the call today. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. And what we'll be doing is we'll be taking uh, chats into the into the chat, so chat as, as much as you like throughout the program. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be monitoring your comments. And then if you have questions throughout the program, we'll take questions at the end and we will uh, pop those into the Q&A chat section, all right? There's a question and answer chat section in your Zoom controls, and that's where we'll try and post most of the questions. I know we also have uh, YouTube going on today and we'll have people who are watching on YouTube. Um, that's a, a beautiful opportunity as well because of course the program will be there for those who want to listen again or who maybe didn't catch it the first time. Great. Elizabeth is wishing you happy birthday prof. Dr. Okoko from University of Lagos in Nigeria. Amazing. Great. Alalaja Odekoyo, University of Lagos, Nigeria. Aha. Oh, you've got a welcome to the sixth floor. I like that. I don't think I've heard that before. Happy birthday, Triple A from Professor Ngozi uh, or Sarin Ren. I'm sorry if I'm not saying the names exactly correctly. We have someone much more capable than I am who will do proper protocols and uh, make sure that uh, he says our Nigerian names much better than I do. I've lived in Nigeria the past six years. I'm now in Nairobi, Kenya, um, but I'm still Canadian and I don't have the same command of the Nigerian names that, <laughs> that I, I could. Great, we have Professor Francis Duru wishing you a happy birthday, sir. We have Dr. Bikola uh, here on the call. Great, from the Department of Educational Foundations, amazing. All right, and um, without further ado, I'm going to get our program started for the day. My name is Anne Turnbull. It's my privilege and honor to welcome you here today and to be part of this great celebration and program for someone we all love and admire and appreciate so very much, Professor Abraham Oshinabe. And to kick off our program, I'm going to welcome to the call Dr. Simeon Iferi. And Dr. Simeon, uh, I'll turn it over to you, sir, and you can go ahead and get us started. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, and thank you. Um, we are expecting the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos. Um, I'm not too sure she has joined, um, but I know that uh, the distinguished Professor Babaji <coughs> Alor, FAS, is already with us, who is the chairman of this program, uh, she has already, he has already joined. Um, we will recognize others, other distinguished um, uh, invitees as they join. Um, um, we expect also uh, Senator Musili Obanikuru and uh, Professor Kola uh, Rashid, uh, the Pro Chancellor of Lagos State University of Science and Technology. Um, we expect it will join us. Uh, we want to acknowledge the presence of uh, uh, Professor Oshinobi's family, uh, the wife, Mrs. Folake, Folake Mi Oshinobi, uh, should be with us now, and the children and other members of uh, the Oshinobi dynasty. You are welcome, and uh, we're all joining to celebrate uh, your patriarch. Um, um, we um, don't forget, don't forget to chat your, your, your questions in the Q&A uh, chat box. Uh, they will be collated and answered on your behalf at the end of the lecture. Um, so let me just scan around if the Vice Chancellor is around because I, I, I because uh, she is supposed to um, uh, yes, give sir. a remark uh, before. Uh, oh, the Vice Chancellor is with us? Oh, great. 
<laughs> I can't look at that. Okay, so uh, I want to uh, formally uh, and specially acknowledge the presence of the Vice Chancellor of the University of Lagos, uh, Professor Fola Shade Ogushala SAS. And uh, uh, Madam Vice Chancellor, we are ready for your remarks. We've just brought her in as a panelist, so she'll be right here. Oh. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. And um, I want to wish um, Professor Shinobi a very, very happy birthday. And to say I'm highly honored to be, you know, giving these remarks on something that's a very personal thing to him. Um, I think in talking about him, I think this unusual way of celebrating his birthday, where he's planting seeds in other people's lives, is typical of who he is. Um, a very kind, uh, generous, but what he professes about good health and healthy living. I've known him for very many years. And this talk of living well is not something he just um, actually walks the talk. So it's a pleasure to be here to start off this webinar and to say that we're in for a lot of gems and seeds that if we take them away, um, we will certainly be better for it. So on behalf of everybody here, I believe I can speak for all of us because we are here. We wish you a, a wonderful birthday. We thank God for the life you have lived. We ask him to bless your footsteps and to continue to bless the works of your hand. We ask that he continues to inspire you and to make you year on year on, year on year on, a better version of yourself. So continue to be the best that you can be and happy birthday and welcome to the sixth floor. Thank you everybody. And I wish you all a wonderful webinar. Happy birthday, Braha. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you very much, uh, Madam VC um, for your best wishes for Professor Oshunubi. Um, I want uh, uh, Tambo to acknowledge those from Mass International that I am. Wonderful. We have uh, we have many associates on the call, and we had the chance to actually put together a really incredible um, video for Professor Oshunubi's 60th birthday. Uh, I shared it yesterday with uh, with our Max family and with Prof and his family. Uh, Mrs. Oshinabe helped me put that together with some wonderful photographs and uh, memories. And so we had many people honor Prof from our Max family, uh, our CEO, Mr. Joe Wojtyki from the US. We had our chief scientist, Dr. Herbert T. Nagasawa, who is uh, actually celebrating his 96th birthday. Uh, along with his son, Dr. Scott Nagasawa. They sent a beautiful birthday greeting um, and our um, CMO from here in uh, Nigeria. So we had many, many uh, dignitaries who came together to celebrate Professor Oshinabe in a very special way. And I hope that it's a keepsake he'll remember for a long time and he'll have it with him to share. So we really appreciate all of you who are on the call. Continue to um, uh, put your name into the chat and let us know uh, where you're calling from. Um, you know, share your birthday greetings with Prof as we as we kick off our uh, our amazing program. And um, Prof, I will turn it back over, uh, Doctor Iferi. I'll turn it back over to you, and I'll let you know as well that um, before I turn it back over to Doctor Iferi, you know. One of the reasons that I'm on this call is because uh, I have been with Max International, our glutathione company for 14 years now. I've known Professor Oshinabe probably for about eight years and um, Prof has delivered so much to our global community. 
we're a company that's open in 21 countries around the world. And of the 55 published papers on ribosine, Professor Oshinabe has published a great many of those, done a lot of research to contribute to the science of uh, something that is really life-changing. And so he is a member of the Max Advisory Council. He is very esteemed and loved by tens of thousands of associates around the world, as well as our management team. And so Prof, know. just know that you are loved and celebrated by our Max family and your Max family today. And uh, Dr. Ifari, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anne. Um, I, I just want to, I, I, I'm not too sure if Professor Rashid Kola is here already and the distinguished uh, Senator Ms. Liu Obanikuru. If they are here, can you just say hello? Okay, now we are going to invite um, the distinguished Professor Babaji Alo. Uh, who was formerly uh, vice, uh, deputy vice chancellor of the University of Lagos, and also the chairman of the advisory board of the business school. Uh, the celebrant and speaker at today's program, uh, Professor Shunubi and I actually worked with him and uh, we still share the experience uh, that we had with him. So uh, we're happy that he's here with us and uh, he's going to give uh, the chairman's opening remarks. Over to you, Professor, distinguished Professor Lowe. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me from wherever you are joining us. Uh, good morning and uh, big, big congratulations to Abraham. Uh, my dear worthy Abraham Adewale Adekpoju Oshinubi, born on the 12th of May in 1963. I'm glad to be here this morning uh, to serve as chair of this uh, webinar. And it is with profound delight that I, I, I say that I send sincere felicitations to you, uh, my dear Aburu uh, Abraham. I've known him for close to uh, 20 years now, before we even now came close to work. Uh, he was the first uh, pioneer executive uh, director of the uh, University of Lagos Business School at Foundation, and I, I was the pioneer chairman of the board uh, overseeing the school. And during that period, I found Abraham a quintessential gentleman, a very seasoned, reasonable, knowledgeable academic who as he said in his inaugural lecture, uh, which he titled Jack of All Trades, Master of All, I also want to say yes, I found Abraham to be a Jack of All Trades. Because when he was being appointed to serve as pioneer executive director of Lagos Business, University of Lagos Business School, everyone wondered that an anatomist a clinician, would he be in the best position to manage a business school? We want to say that Abraham Oshinubi discharged his responsibilities so wonderfully well that we want to say that he put the school on its right footing. He put the school where it's supposed to be upfront in uh, uh, the league of business schools all over the world. I want to say how proud I am of you, uh, Abraham Oshinubi. I want to say how happy I am with you for today for getting into the sixth floor, as our veritable vice chancellor just said. 
because you are an irresistible, hardworking uh, academic who never rests on his oars. As you are finishing one, you are getting into another one. And I can I listen carefully to Ann Tumble mentioning your accolades in the Marx family. I remember, yes, you introduced Marx products to um, the University of Lagos and even to Lagos. And you, you've also excelled to the point where you were appointed to the board of the, of the Marx group. So we continue to feel proud of you, Abraham. And we continue to say that we wish you many, many more years uh, ahead of you. 60, at 60, you are just 30. At 60, with your heart of gold, which is, amiable, which is an amiable, good-natured, and genial heart that you have, I can see that you are going to get there. You're going to get higher. You're going to get better than us who have entered the 70s. You're going to be 70. You're going to be 80. You're going to be 90, 100. And with your product, I think you will even get to 120 because you are the one selling uh, life to every one of us. You are the one who says that we may live well, we should live long, and not die living corpse. The, 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 that is very clear that you are suddenly all set to do well in whatever it is you lay your hands on. So I'm happy to be here this morning, and I'm happy to chair the event. Dr. Simon Ifere, who is anchoring, as you know, um, we all serve together. And I do not want to uh, spend more than the three minutes allocated to me. I hope I've not overshoot, uh, I've not overshot the three minutes that are located, but I'm so glad and I'm so excited, just as Anton Bull is, uh, to be here this morning to celebrate this indefatigable gentleman, this in, in, indefatigable uh, astute academic, astute. Um, clinician, astute anatomist, uh, somebody who at any point you give him, give him any assignment, you can be sure you, you should consider that it done. So I'm not surprised that even after his MBBS, acquired the PhD, acquired the MBA, acquired uh, several fellowships. Congratulations, uh, Abraham, and I wish you well. And this webinar, I trust, is also a good way to celebrate. And it's typical of you. Rather than throw a street party, you decided to, to serve the world. You decided to let the world uh, gain from your knowledge and your experience. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prof. Um, it's always a delight to work with you at any and every occasion. Um, so uh, now uh, I want to remind you that you chat your questions using the Q&A chat box, and these will be collated and, and asked on your behalf at the end of the lecture. Now, I want to invite, yes, we have the compliment, the presence of uh, Professor Ungozi Osiri of uh, the University of Lagos. Uh, you are welcome, Prof. Now, I want uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Mary. Um, uh, to give the citation, or uh, Maria Kiemi to give the citation of Professor Shunubi, and then we'll get on with the lecture for the day. Thank you so very much, Dr. Perry. Thank you, Anne, and um, congratulations once again, Prof. Thank you very much, uh, DBC Emeritus. Um, can I ask that um, the host spotlight Professor Shunubi, and can I humbly ask that Professor Shunubi turns on his camera so he can be spotlighted? for the reading of his citation. Thank you very much. Can we spotlight him, please? I'm going to stop sharing to make that easier. Thank you very much. Professor Abraham A. A. Oshinobi. Professor Oshinobi is a consummate academic who has been inducted into the fellowship of six prestigious academics within and outside Nigeria. Professor Shinobi is a professor of anatomy and director of Medilac Consult, University of Lagos. 
He is the pioneer executive director of the University of Lagos Business School and an immediate past global program director at Union Group. Um, please feel free to use the virtual um, hand clap button if we need to. Abraham Oshinubi had his MBBS degrees from University of Ibadan in 1987. Greatest UIT. MBA from Amadou Bello University, MSc in year 2000 and PhD in year 2006 in anatomy from the University of Lagos. He was the founder, chief medical director and CEO of Oxford Clinics and Hospitals between 1991 and 2000, after which he joined the University of Lagos in 2001. He has over two, 22 years experience in the teaching of microscopic and endocrine anatomy in the University of Lagos. He is an accomplished stereologist, a reproductive and endocrine anatomist, and a fellow of the American College of Endocrinology. He is an expert on teaching innovations, especially in the design and use of student-centered learning and the team lead for case-based studies in the College of Medicine of the University of Lagos, CMUR. Professor Oshinobi is an entrepreneur and organizational strategist, and he teaches leadership and organizational dy dynamics in schools and different fora around the world. Dr. Oshinobi was appointed Associate Professor of Anatomy by the Lagos State University Lasso in the year 2008 and was head of Department of Anatomy, Lagos State University College of Medicine, Lassicum, from the year 2008 to the year 2009 while he was on sabbatical appointment there. He was appointed Associate Professor of Anatomy by the University of Lagos in the year 2010 and was head of Department of Anatomy, University of Lagos from the year 2010 to the year 2012. He was the sub-dean of the Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, College of Medicine of the University of Lagos from the year 2012 to year 2014. Abraham Oshinobi was appointed full professor of anatomy by the University of Lagos in the year 2015. Professor, professor Oshinobi was the head of anatomy, University of Lagos, between 2017 and 2020. He is an external examiner to several universities, including the University of Ghana and Guru Nanak Dev University, Amritsar, Punjab, India. He is a visiting scholar to KwaZulu Natal University, Duran, South Africa. Dr. Oshinobi was the Secretary General of the Endocrine and Metabolism Society of Nigeria for four years and the vice president for four years. He is currently the vice president of the Lagos University Medical Society. Dr. Abraham A. A. Oshinobi has successfully supervised 18 doctorate theses and numerous MSc projects and dissertations. Eight of his students are already professors. And as we like to say in the University of Lagos, he's a professor of professors. He is the foundation editor in chief of the University of Lagos Journal of Medical, Basic Medical Sciences. He was elected, elected to the fellowship of the American College of Endocrinology FACE in the year 2009. The convocation of which took place in April 2010 in Boston, Massachusetts, in the United States of America. The Anatomical Society of Nigeria conferred on him the highest honor of the society, FESN, that is, Fellow of the Anatomical Society of Nigeria in the year 2016, while the Society of Experimental and Clinical Anatomists similarly conferred him with her highest honor of FSECAN, that is the Fellow of the Society of Experimental and Clinical Anatomists in the year 2017. He became a foundation fellow of the Academy of Medicine, Specialists of Nigeria, and the fellow of the Nigerian Academy of Medicine in year 2021, 
and fellow of the Endocrine and Metabolism Society of Nigeria in 2022. Dr. Oshinobi has authored over 120 scientific publications in learned journals and two textbooks of anatomy. He co-authored the first and second national clinical practice guidelines for diabetes management in Nigeria in the year 2012 and 2013. Between the year 2000 and 2006, Dr. Oshinobi developed the quinine testicular model, which has become the model of choice for studying fertility, male infertility, and spermatogenesis in Nigeria. ResearchGate acknowledged him as one of the most cited authors in his field in December 2015 and he was voted by the students as the lecturer with the greatest positive influence on students in the CMUL in the year 2010. World Scientist Ranking 2023 rates him among the top 2% researchers in Nigeria. Google Scholar ranks his citation 1469 H-Index 23 and I-10 Index 49. He is an entrepreneurship developer, a business and health coach. Professor Abraham Oshinobi is happily married to Mrs. Kemi Oshinobi and are both blessed with wonderful children and grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, with great pleasure, I present you Professor A. 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 Oshinobi. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Han. Thank you, Dr. Fury. And thank you, my chairman, um, distinguished Professor Jide Allo. And of course, uh, my great gratitude to uh, the Vice Chancellor, of Professor Gunshalai Fiers. And thank you to everyone. Why this is not the time for acknowledgement of vote of thanks, let me just also. Thank all of us that have come here. While I also share my, take the opportunity to also share my screen. Uh, it gives me great joy to do this. And I'm very, very much excited to actually do this. Yes, I am very, very much excited because uh, there is nothing comparable to health. And please, I will, for us to save time, um, reserve all your questions at the end of the my presentation. And secondly, I'm going to give, uh, as a teacher, I'm going to give a quick assignment within the presentation. So uh, ensure that you have a piece of paper and a, a piece of paper and a pen with you that will save us a lot of time. So um, once again, um, I thank you all for coming, but I am sure you are going to be richly bl blessed by this presentation. So while I take my time to organize man, put it on. So we are, I'm gonna, we are looking at, let's look at the topic first, that we may live well, live long and not die a living corpse. Of course, is it, it looks straightforward when you talk about living well, when you live long, but it may not be that straightforward when you talk about not die a living corpse. The, the idea here is that life is short, life is good, there is no second chance. And therefore, this particular existence of ours, we must live it well. So many, you can be, uh, it, I always tell people, it's always great or best still to say, to actually live than just existing. So many are actually existing. They, they, they are not living. But so such a form of existence can so, sometimes 
be categorized as living as a corpse. A life that is uh, not achieving its purpose, especially in terms of health, cannot be said to be actually um, a living rather than that person is existing. So that explains the topic. So now, what exactly are we, why are we talking about health? Ladies and gentlemen, when health is absent, wisdom cannot reveal itself. Art can never become manifest. Strength cannot ever be exacted. In fact, the world, you may have the whole world. Once you don't have good health, you are just useless. The wealth is useless. Okay? So, having a lot of money does not necessarily connote happiness without good health. Reason is powerless, it's useless. Logic becomes incapacitated without good health. We have defined, to, to make it very clear, we have defined health as not just uh, absence of physical infirmity or absence of disease. Health, as we know it now, has come to include com a, a complete or holistic well-being, physical well-being, mental well-being, psychological well-being, social well-being. All these have now been um, categorized as a state of good health. Ladies and gentlemen, a healthy body is a guest chamber for the soul, while a sick body is a prison for the soul. For me, way back in 2008, I, I, I penned this down. I said, I, I Abraham or Shinobi, consider health to be one of the greatest gifts and privileges. So it is a gift. It is a privilege. However, the honus is on us. We have that prerogative right to preserve it, to protect it. Because if you don't preserve it, if you don't protect it, it will be taken away. That is the that is what is called us. Now let's look at 12 fundamentals of health that we set uh, the, the, the ball rolling. 12 fundamentals of health that you need to know first. Number one is that disease sets in through a combination of three things, through combination of three entities, genetics or your genes can be hereditary, environment, lifestyle. We are, we are, it gets very interesting now is that it is the combination of this. Unfortunately, the, the, the combination of this in every disease is different. So there is no mathematical equation to say, okay, oh, because there are three genetics, we play uh, uh, 33%, uh, environment, we play 33%, and lifestyle, we play it doesn't work that way. Sometimes the genes may take a large chunk of the 100%. Sometimes environment will take, sometimes lifestyle will take. But you see, in health, we also look at low angry fruits. Number two, we also look at how do we strategize to maintain good health? And if we are not too fortunate not to be in good health, maybe we are not in too good health and we want to achieve better health, this is what we are, it will also assist us in knowing we are, what can we change? As of today, well, genetics is, um, is, has changed dramatically over years. We now have what we now call gene editing. We now have knockout genes. We now have knocking genes. The idea is here in genetics, here in gene editing, is that if we see that this is the gene that is, has been coated, that we have actually gotten that, once you have it, you are likely going to have a disease. We can go inside and remove those genes and either put a dummy gene or put a normal gene. 
at least the cl clinical trials of this are going on. So it means that that is not easily achievable as of today. So then we then look, then the individuals and the health provider, we then look at the environment. Okay, since we can relatively not change for now, at least uh, clinically, and it's not widespread. Okay, can we look at the environment? Yes, we can look at the environment. Can we look at the lifestyle? And this is where I now, we are now saying categorically that you cannot use the environment, the lifestyle to actually reprogram your gene. You can actually use the environment, the lifestyle to reset your gene, okay? Like you press reset button for your, uh, for your laptop. You can also press the reset button for actually your health or your body so that it begins to have a trajectory that you actually desire. So all these three, we actually combine to do that. Now, number two, ladies and gentlemen, the best time to prepare for your health today and tomorrow was actually six months before your conception. Let me repeat that for emphasis. The best time to prepare for your today's health and your tomorrow's health was six months, at least six months before your conception, yes. That is even before you were conceived, six months before you were conceived. Unfortunately, I'm sure many on this call never had that opportunity, but so which is the second best time? There's no third best time. The second best time is now, is today. But what could you have done six months before your conception, the environment that is created by the the ambience that is created by the couples is so critical, so important. The environment as well also starts not just after birth. The environment also starts within the mother. So the, because the environment communicates, okay, with the unborn child. So what are the parents talking to themselves? Have, has, have, the, have the parents jointly created the right ambience for growth, for development, even within the uterus, while the incubation was taking place, while the gestation was taking place? This is so critical to what the child will become. So the environment is not just about when the baby is born and then we are seeing the baby life. No, the environment actually starts within the uh, the uterus within the womb. Number three, ladies and gentlemen, the human machine is the most advanced machine on the surface of this planet. It has been created to heal itself. You must understand that. Okay, the human body is a self-regulating organism. It is programmed to heal itself, but of course, when virus is just like a computer that is attacked by viruses, it begins to misbehave. It gives signs. But many times, many times, we don't pay attention to those signs. Okay, those are the things we talk about here today. Number four, in the beginning, in the beginning, we believe environment, including landscapes, including oceans, rivers, including the soil. They were Princeton in nature. Pollution was almost nil, almost zero. And this is quite important for us in the sense that a lot of, because we are not using many of the, the antidotes to pollutants, the rule in medicine and health and science generally, whatever you don't use, we actually atrophy it. It will begin to dwindle down in terms of strength, in terms of power, and may even go into extinction. We believe strongly that a lot of enzymes, because they were not being used I didn't, for several years that will range, I don't want to give figures now, depending on what you believe in, um, thousands of years, millions of years, over time, the, most of the full complement of the enzymes, we lost them over time. However, because 
life has changed now. The environment is polluted now. We need then to begin to assist the body to, to reprogram the body on how we can then develop these enzymes, these antidotes back into the body. As of today, I do not see anyone, for example, with full complement of the enzyme that are actually making, for example, a lot of the uh, antioxidants in the body to function optimally. Number five, there is a degree of wellness that you need to understand that ranges between zero and 10. Most people in the world actually are between four or six. And this is very significant. This is why you see, for example, oh, I saw him yesterday, but today that person is in the morgue, is in the mortuary. Because people can actually move without them knowing from the comfort zone of five down to zero. Zero is death. So what this enlightenment um, webinar is to achieve is to help you move from around four, five, six to seven, eight, nine, and gradually push you to 10. Another thing you need to understand about this is that as you age, something happens, and this is very important. As you grow older, your telomeres, as you grow older, your telomeres actually, they get shortened. What are telomeres? Telomeres are the tail ends of your chromosomes. They protect the coding areas of every chromosome. So we have now found out that the older you become, the shorter actually your telomeres. Or should I reverse it? The shorter your telomeres are, the, I mean, the, more, the probability, as a matter of fact, we now know categorically that your quality of life, the quantum of your life, meaning that your life expectancy would largely be determined by telomeres. So as you grow older, your telomeres also will get shortened. Uh, again, like I said, as your telomeres, they get shortened, your life expectancy will actually reduce. This is very significant. These telomeres are this. For every cell division that you undertake, your telomeres are the tail end. They get shortened, they get shortened, they get shortened. They get shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. It gets to a point, your chromosomes are begin to, they are begin to be wavy in nature. So they, they, they can no longer support existence. You know what happens? The, of course, when the chromosomes in like quantity die, that person dies. And so what are we doing now? So that means we must, your, your strategy, part of your strategy of good living, part of your strategies of good quality of life is to protect your telomeres. You must find a way of protecting your telomeres. Another thing is paralleling the reduction in your body of the telomeres. Once you have found out again, almost paralleling is your level of glutathione. It means as well that your strategy must also include how you can actually raise your glutathione. By the time people are 20, your glutathione begins to go down. And by the time you are 60, you would have lost over half of your glutathione level. Another thing we have seen is inflammation. As you grow older, your, you, you gradually go into a state we now call a state of persistent subacute, okay, chronic inflammation. And because we have now associated aging to this inflammation, we have now invented the terminology, inflammaging, inflammaging. That is to tell you that there is so much association with aging and inflammation. So it means that one of the strategies you need to employ is how to slow down your inflammation three process in your body. Inflammation on its own is good, but when it becomes chronic, that is when it becomes disturbing. So you can see the difference here. This is somebody that is able to lower down, able to tame inflammation a little bit, and he's still on his feet. But look at somebody who is not able to tame inflammation. The rate of inflammation is persistent, is, acceler is being accelerated 
And of course, by the time such people are 70, they're even 16, uh, they will be having a lot of health challenges. Number nine, your health impacts heavily on your decision making. It impacts on your wealth generation. It impacts on your destiny. You must know that. Number 10, many diseases are preventable. We can prevent a lot of diseases. Yes. I mean, I, uh, a lot of authors have quoted figures between 60 to 90 to 95 that are preventable. And I agree completely. Even when the AK-47 has loaded the genes, you can always reset it. How do you reset it? With the environment, with lifestyle. And that is why we are here today. Number 11, your greatest asset is, is health. Your greatest asset is health. You need to be, even in accordance with Maslow laws, under physiological needs that people don't mention, people talk about oxygen, people talk about uh, basic needs of life, having shelter, having that. It's because you have good health, you even think about shelter. Okay, so health is our greatest asset. And lastly, something very important here. And what is that? Let me, sorry. You can change the trajectory or the prognosis of many of your humans. If you, if, if you look at this graph here, the quality of life is often always reducing. By the time you are 40, 50 going up, the quality of life in almost every climb is almost the same. So what this seminar is trying to do today is to push you up, okay? So that to push you up in terms of quality and to push you up in terms of life expectancy. And we can change the prognosis, we can change the trajectory, we can change the cost of many of these ailments. Okay, now let's look at, I want, okay, good. Now let's look at this data. Every single day, every single day, every single day, we lose about 160,000 people. And most people in the world will succumb usually to heart diseases that include hypertension, stroke, heart attack. Over 80 million people will die every year from various forms of heart diseases. Cancer suddenly jumped from about um, 8 million as of two years ago. Now, as at last year, about 10 million people died of cancers. Dementias, about uh, 1.6 million people will die of dementias. About 1.5 million people will die of diabetes every year. Unfortunately, most of the, uh, the, the, the burden of most of this actually in Low reset, low economy settings, and poor resource managed economies. That is where we find a lot, a lot of this. Now let's look at the uh, the heart as as our heart disease as a whole. About thirty percent of the world's adults are currently hypertensive. T yes, thirty percent in the world now we are about um, eight billion people. So you can imagine. Okay, over two billion people are actually hypertensive, and that is uh, that, that that is struggling. Thirty-one percent of all deaths worldwide are related to heart disease. It may also interest you that in U.S. alone, every forty seconds, somebody comes up with a heart attack death. Yes, every forty seconds, so a heart attack occurs. Okay, and every minute, about almost every minute, we lose somebody from heart attack, okay? So this is really, and in every 40 seconds as well, somebody somewhere in this in the world is actually come up, coming up with, a, uh, with, with death from stroke. So all these are very, very important. Now, cancers, I will take my time a little bit there. Somebody said yesterday to me, said the fear of cancer is the beginning of wisdom. You know, you don't need to fear anything you can actually, um, there are so many things you can do. But let me give you, to tell you the data on cancers. Number one is that about 10 million people 
will die every year from cancers. Cancer of the breast, every 14 seconds, a woman is diagnosed of breast cancer somewhere in the world, every 14 seconds. It's not a mistake, please. Not 14 minutes, every 14 seconds that we spend. Somebody somewhere in this world is being diagnosed of breast cancer. Number two, colorectal cancer. One in 23 men will likely have colorectal cancer. One in 25 women will likely have colorectal cancer. For, for men, with pr prostate cancer, almost 10 percent, over 10 percent. In fact, the new data is saying that 13 percent of men are likely going to have prostate cancer. When you now take all this into, when you take all this into globe, into uh, in, in, into globally, when you take it globally, the data will say that. Over half of the world are likely going to come across cancer in the world. So, but we can prevent this. All these data are you can make them to come to pass if we don't do anything. But God forbid they will not come to pass because we are going to do something. Any hope? Yes, there is hope. So I'm going to scan through what I've developed in the last 36 years. 21 things, 21 items that we can do to actually mitigate the effects of a lot of these diseases. Starting from information seeking, self-assessment, stress, alcohol, smoke, weight, healthy eating, water, hygiene, fasting, safe living habits, moderation, love, mindset, cheerfulness, meditation, recreation, regular exercise, music, glutathione, and checkups. Number one thing that we must do is to seek knowledge. It's so important. 1A, 1B, 1C information, just like what you are here. You need information. It is wrong for you to think that what you do not know cannot kill you. In fact, what kills people more is what they do not know. Number two, we must take stock. We, this, this is something we must do regularly and continually. So take, stock taking with your paper and pen quickly. I will be mentioning some, um, some things and then you'll be giving yourself one or zero. When you get it right, it is one. A yes is one. Number one, do you have a good sense of well-being? If your well-being is not, uh, it is, it may be subjective, actually, but do you have a good sense of well-being in you? If it is yes, give yourself yes. If it is no, give yourself no. Yes means one. Number two, is your day-to-day -day energy level perfect? When you wake up, how do you feel? Is your energy perfect at the perfect level? You give yourself a yes or a no. Number three, are you a non-smoker? Well, I've said it over and over everywhere in the world. Nobody... Everyone, the whole world is, 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 we are all smokers now. Every one of us, we are all smokers in the world. Gener smoke from wood, from generator, from cigarette. So it's not just from cigarette smoke. And it's not just from direct smoke alone, secondhand smoke. So, I mean, almost the whole world, we are all smokers. It doesn't have to be cigarette. Number four, do you check your blood pressure? Okay. Your blood sugar, your lipid profile regularly. Yes, do you check these things regularly? Do you drink alcohol within limits? Okay. Do you avoid self-medication? You need to ask yourself. I mean, once you are any little thing, oh, you take an adjustic for just every, almost every little thing. Okay. Do you take time off each day to relax or unwind? Yes or no? Do you cope perfectly with azuts? in your stride, okay? Are you at your ideal body weight? Number 10, do you eat adequate balanced diet? 
Adequate balanced diet, by my definition, includes minimum of seven servings of vegetables and fruits every day. Number 11, do you exercise regularly? That is minimum of about, okay, don't let me say minimum, about 60 minutes every day, okay? I don't want to reduce the standard, 60 minutes per day. Do you take at least three to four liters of water every day? So you total whatever you get. If your number of years falls between 11 and 12, that is excellent. Yes, that will be excellent. Okay. If your number falls between 9 and 10, that is good. If your number falls between 6 to 8, that is poor. If your number falls between 0 to 5, most of the time, most people around will fall between 6 to 8. I think you will get people getting to 9. But is hope lost? No. The good news is that we can modify a lot of this. Yes, we can, what I describe as the way of life. You can let all these things I'm going to talk about subsequently become your way of life. They become your habit. They become typical way of your living. They become your day-to-day -day lifestyle. Number three, stress. You must learn to minimize stress. I call stress the greatest what, let me tell you before then, before I tell you what I call stress. By the way, stress, what you probably call stress is not stress. Let me tell you what, stress is actually a normal body response to something in your environment that is trying to destabilize you. That's your body, normal body response is stress. That agent that is trying to change the balance, okay, the stability, the homeostasis within you is actually the stressor. So stress can be, stress, there are good stresses, yes, that we refer to as positive stress or tolerable, okay? These are positive. But when stress becomes chronic every day, every minute, see what is happening. Your cortisol keeps on increasing, keeps on. No, God has not created your body to walk within that range. Your cortisol is supposed to rise in the morning and as midday progresses to the evening, then reduces. But when you are perpetually, chronically, perennially under stress, then your cortisol and several other stress hormones, they are at very, very high level. This is dangerous to your health and you must change it. And that is why I say categorically that stress is the modern, number one modern killer, number one silent killer, number one unspoken productivity killer. And stress affects your body, affects your mind, affects your emotion, affects your behavior, affects your entity, affects you, every system in your body. So you must find, the, find a way of actually minimizing the effect of stress on your life. So it affects your endocrine system, your nervous system, your, your gastrointestinal system, your stress system. I don't see any system in your body that stress does not affect. So what are the three things? I always tell people to do three things in terms of stress. Ladies and gentlemen, be expectant. You know, be expectant. Be, see, many times, the, the, the things giving you stress are not inanimate objects. They are humans around you. So be expectant. Nobody is perfect in life, okay? Nobody is perfect. Then don't give don't raise, don't give standards to people who don't have standards. You are expecting such a high, very high standards from people. Unfortunately, they disappoint you. So you feel so bad. Don't give standards. Don't allocate standards. Don't bequeath standards to people who don't have standards. Number three, admit that several situations in life that you can't change and you move on with your life. There are several things in this world that we cannot change. I mean, I travel a lot, and once I get to the airport, I settle down. Oh, has the flight been postponed? If it has been postponed, I maintain my calm. I can't help it. I move ahead whenever I'm staying in the airport for for several. I mean, for 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 several hours, I've slept overnight in the airport. But so you don't allow those things to give you stress. So be expectant. Don't unnecessarily raise people beyond what they can do, you, okay? Admit there are several situations in life that you cannot change. We must minimize alcohol if you want to live healthy. 
Yes, if you want to achieve our uh, optimum, I mean, even though there is a there is there is actually prescription for alcohol. Yes, there is prescription, but when there are health challenges, alcohol is almost a forbidden thing, especially in heart diseases. Yes, it's almost a lot of people don't even uh, alcohol actually actually raises the risk of cancers. Yes, uh, for people who have diabetes, alcohol actually wasn't. Uh, diabetic control and i mean several years ago we were talking about oh the prescription a glass of red wine per day is good for the for a for for, for the man for the woman a of age a half, half a glass no but we now we have now tailored it down to volume because we are using glass one glass for a man half glass for the woman until we now saw a glass no, a drinking glass that will take 750 times two. Okay. And then we now say, okay, no, 250 mils of eight, about maximum of eight to 10%. Okay. Per day for the man and about 125 uh, mils per day for the woman. So it is now, that's the prescription. Smoke. A lot of us pay attention to smoke. Like I said here, everybody in this world is currently a smoker. Nobody is exempted. Okay. Tobacco is the single largest preventable cause of disease and premature death in the world. In the world. Unfortunately, it is associated with virtually every ailment. Tobacco. Any cigarette smoke, let me take let me, cigarette smoke generally contains cigarette smokes contains over 7,000 toxicants, ladies and gentlemen, over 7,000 toxicants, out of which 70 of them we have identified them to be carcinogens. They promote cancer, they are associated with cancer. 70 of them. Unfortunately, the fact that you don't smoke doesn't mean you are not prone. You are not inhaling smoke. I mean, um, we are not only talking about tobacco smoke here. We are talking about all other smoke, uh, influence from industry, influence from vehicles, influence from generators. So everybody is a smoker in the world. Of course, smoke also um, has been implicated in diabetes, unfortunately as well. Uh, a lot. We have a lot of people who drink and smoke. So I consider, it. unfortunately, there are several parameters in the human body that smoke would increase. There are several parameters in the human body that alcohol will reduce and vice versa. So what, what is it? it means you have in the same, in one body, things working almost opposite to one another. And what, you, what do you have? A, a chaotic situation in that body. And this is why it is it is advisable that we uh, we, we moderate it. Okay, then of course we are not well. There are areas we are also not looking at dumping sites. I'm sure some of us are used around. We are used to we, uh, we smoke in or vehicles wood smoke. By the way, we are not thinking that even wood smoke may be as dangerous, if not more dangerous than cigarette smoke. I will tell you the reason. Most of the uh, uh, of the toxicants in wood, once we inhale them, they are almost certain to be permanently there in your body because they are not biodegradable. So these are also part of the dangers of smoke. We have now over 177 million organic and inorganic substances registered in the world. The unfortunate thing about this data is that only 50% of these have been tested. Less than 50% have been tested for toxicity. Less than 10 have been tested for genome toxicity. So it, it is really a big problem. So this is the situation we have in the world now. Everywhere is polluted. We need to, if you want to, have good health, you need to maintain the right weight. Yes, obesity. Because oh, now over 30% of the world 
is either obese or overweight now. So we have invented the term now, globesity, meaning that obesity is, a, a, is worldwide, is global in nature, okay? And I don't think we need to add to this problem. It's something we can actually control. So you, you can use body mass index to actually assess your body weight. But let me also say that one of the things that body weight excess body weight does, especially when it is central obesity does, is to actually raise your uh, triglyceride and bad cholesterol in your body. You know, uh, it will make your insulin level, that is sugar disposal, actually very difficult to achieve. Then inflammatory process goes on and on and on, and then you be, you be permanently on, on chronic inflammation. Okay, and these are the things that actually uh, push that individual to having chronic diseases later in life. So it's something we just have to find a way of control. So central obesity, abdominal obesity is worse off because it connotes to us that a lot of your internal organs are actually are clogged with a lot of fat. So we need to uh, make some changes on that. Uh, it is also important that abdominal obesity also has to do with your mental health, we have now found a link, an association between abdominal obesity and depression, anxiety, and a lot of other men health problems. So it's not just about for physique. I want to look well. No, it's more than that. You need to look at your uh, uh, levels of weight gain. You need to monitor it. You need to be strategic about it. You need to be intentional and you need to be deliberate about it because it poses a lot of health, health challenges. As a matter of fact, obesity may account for over 40% of cancers in men and over 20% of cancers in, in women. So then we have also, also invented the term diabetes. That we now have a lot of diabetes that are highly associated with weight gain. So that's the time we are, we got the time diabetes. It may also interest you that when you have excess weight, you have actually shot yourself in the food by losing several years of your life expectancy. Okay. So it is important that we actually monitor what okay. gain. Generally, on the overall, there's an inverse linear relationship between life expectancy and your BMI. So the higher your BMI is, the likelihood that you are not going to live long as you, you should have lived long. And you are not likely going to experience the good quality of life that has been bestowed upon you have been issue than when you now have excess weight gain. So it is important. Sometimes we can also use waste hip ratio to do this. Nutrition. It is so important that we look at nutrition. Over 70% of diseases can actually be prevented by, uh, can actually be prevented, can actually be minimized. The body can be minimized by uh, nutrition. And Thomas Edison said this long, long, long time ago. And we are giving different colors of, of food varieties to have different nutrients. You need a lot of different nutrients. That is why it's not just monocolor. No, that is why fruits, plants, they have various colors. We have green, we have white, we have red, we have yellow, we have orange, we have purple. We need to try to ensure that we, we, we look into this. And in the beginning, we believe strongly that lifespan um, was, uh, was, lo was longer than what we have now until men started to actually eat meat before before the be, 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 before the flood people were living 956 years 900 years 800 years but immediately the eating of flesh was permitted then the life expectancy dropped so even um we knew that already there are what i personally call anti-aging foods that you need to look they are common around us there are things you can do Tomatoes, okay, olive oil, green leafy vegetables, nuts, sweet potatoes, fatty fish, salmon, mackerel, tuna, sardines. These are very important fruits, carrots. These are anti aging foods that we can actually employ. They are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are right with us that we can use to actually minimize. You know, I told you earlier that one of the major things 
that actually count against people later in life is that inflammation becomes subacute, become perennial, and then they become chronic and chronic and chronic, and they become persistent all life. And when you have chronic inflammation going on and on, the rate of senescence, the rate of aging, will actually accelerate up. And then that pays, those people having that have the tendency to actually develop a lot of diseases. We must minimize salt. So it is very important. Salt is the cheapest preservative in the world. Almost every food material actually has salt. What I was telling my children now is that, look, don't train my grandchildren with salt. Do you know that if you don't, if you, if you, if you are not used to salt, ideally, I tell you, you don't even need to put salt in the food because almost every food items, they already have enough salt that you need to maintain your body. And anyway, a lot of the, virtually every preservative in this world, salt is added to them because it's the cheapest preservative. So salt shakers are, are one of the greatest killers in the world. If I, I always tell people, if I get to your house, the first place I'm going to go is go, go straight to your dining table. And if I say salt shaker, yeah, I will help you dispose them, okay? So it is important we minimize salt, it is also important for us to note that in terms of cancer prevention, diet has a lot of part to play. Even when that, when you have the genes for developing cancer, you can reprogram those genes. You can tame those genes. You can prevent those genes from manifesting by eating appropriate food, okay? that are rich in antioxidants, that are rich in phytochemicals that will protect you and yourself in the body. Antioxidants have been known to protect DNA dam dam damages, okay? So it's so important. I mean, a lot of, I've done, in fact, over, if you call me a herbalist by, by, by research, you are right. I've worked on um, over 50, at least 50 of my publications have been on plants. So you need to look at a lot of food material items in your surrounding that you can actually use. You know, I put this there. Um, when you get to a certain age, like the sixth floor in which I am now, you no, know, you begin to avoid even right from things like uh, the internal organs. You, you eat those things in moderation. You must minimize you must minimize them. What you need to begin to eat now are fishes with bones, uh, snails, okay, prawns, okay. Those are things that uh, crabs that you need to begin to to feed on more. Okay, red meat. Yes, for for people in sixth floor, even from fifth floor, you'd mean you need to have a good reduction of that. And anyway, I mean. Grilling feet, um, the so-called lasun can be dangerous, but in moderation, everything because of the nitrites that have been that are created when you do this, and these have been implicated in generation of cancers in the human body. Twenty years ago, this is the size of donut we had. Today, this is the size of donut we have. Okay. 20, 30 years ago, this is the size of the burger, but today, this is the size of the burger we now having. 20, 30 years ago, this is the size of cakes we have. We had then, but this is the size of the cakes we now have today. As look at the astronomical transformation of the size of the magnitude of soft drink of the sugar that you are consuming. This is what we have today. In fact, in some occasions you have them in free of charge in in certain places. Okay, just go there and take your own. Okay, many of us are taking 13 cups of sugar, 14 cups of sugar every day. I think we need to do our sweetness. Better alternatives to sugar, no, 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 no. They are not better. In fact, some of them can be more dangerous than, uh, than, than sugar. Stevia is a natural sweetener. By the way, let me point it out clearly that the fact that something is natural doesn't mean it cannot harm you. And anyway, the, with the way I am seeing proliferation of sweeteners made from stevia, I am now beginning to suspect that these stevia are not even, they are manufactured in the lab now. So you need to be very, very careful about that. Nutritional label, please be in habit of reading nutritional labels of everything. It's not because you have thirsty, you drank that uh, soft drink, and then after, because you have quenched your tax seemingly, and then you are now, you now start, you begin to look at nutritional labels. No, look at nutritional labels of every item. Even when they, I know many of them tell lies anyway, but still look at them. It, it is good for you to know. For example, I, I've now seen clearly, because people now know that trans fats are dangerous. Do you know what? 
manufacturers are not doing. Instead of putting trans fat, they now put hydrogenated, put big grammar there, yeah, hydrogenated fat. Hydrogenated fats are the same thing as trans fat. Okay, it's using a fanciful name to call a bad thing, period. Okay, then cooking utensils. Most of us are using aluminum utensils. God will help us. Let's graduate to stainless steel. Let's graduate to titanium. Aluminum is the is the third commonest element in the earth cross. So aluminum is very common. Okay, in our body, and aluminum has been implicated in a lot of dementias, a lot of degenerative disease of the brain. So we need to minimize the. And you would have seen clearly over time. Your, a lot of the aluminum pores you have at home, after some time, they will develop pores. Where do you think those particles have gone? They are in your body already, causing damages. So these are the things you need to, to look at. Oh, takeaways. Everybody, everybody loves takeaway. But see, ladies and gentlemen, takeaway plastic are dangerous. You need to minimize the use of takeaway. Uh, plastic, style, especially with hot food, please. One, if the food is cold, no problem. But if it is half hot or you... Well, it is dangerous because of the release of two agents. Two agents. One, bisphenol A, okay? Bisphenol A and again, dioxins. They will leach into the food material. And these are confirmed carcinogens in plastics, okay? So let us avoid them. I mean, let us avoid, I see this a lot in a lot of hotels, wrapping, Oh, a Bahamala swallow in Lylon. This should stop. It should stop. You, you are eating poison gradually. Unfortunately, these do not kill at once. They kill instrumentally. Yes, they kill instrumentally. The, the leaves our parents were using, they are still the best. They are the best. You can't compare. So to make matter what some people are even boil, uh, make moi moi in cellophane in Lylon, for God's sake. Lylon, bisphenol, dioxins, I, already, they, I, I mean, they are, they are already in the food and people are eating that every day. But because they do not kill immediately, you do not take cognizance of this. These are things that kill, they kill actually instrumentally. Boilers, any boiler that contains plastic is dangerous, period. Water, take at least three liters of good water every day. The emphasis can never be too much on this. Yes. Whether it's after food, during food, I don't go into controversy. Alkaline water. Alkaline water. Yes, people, a lot of companies came to me for endorsement of the alkaline water. I, tell, I said, no, we don't have enough data. I take alkaline water, but we don't have enough data to support it. Decide so there is no so tomorrow we may have, but as of today, the, we don't have enough scientific evidence to support the claims of alkaline water. So that is the way hygiene we can never overemphasize the principles of hygiene, especially the hands are one of the dirtiest places in, uh, in our body. We need to take good care of our hands, okay? Body hygiene is also sleep hygiene, sleep hygiene means good quality and good length. Let me tell you quickly on sleep. We have now found out that melatonin may be melatonin may be a mitochondria targeted antioxidant. Mitochondria targeted antioxidant. That's melatonin. But where do you secrete more of melatonin in your body? Natural melatonin comes about three to 10 times in the night, not in sleep. So you expect a lot of healings of damages, a lot of healings of damages that are for core during the day, during your day-to-day -day activity to take place in the night. But unfortunately, if you deprive yourself of too much sleep, you are going to deny yourself of rejuvenation. You are going to deny yourself of the opportunity for your body to heal itself. So you've got to set your body back on the track of healing itself. Or I just can never be myself. Car air conditioning, please use it judiciously and let's um, apply a lot of culture, especially in, when you park your car and then you have uh, has been inside the sun for a while and then suddenly you are 
you are going out and then please wind down your glasses. Let fresh air comes in. Let there be a change of air before you uh, actually roll up your, your, your glasses. Ultraviolet radiation, especially big. It, there are a lot of dangerous rays coming from the sun, ultraviolet, especially B. There is, we have ultraviolet A and B and C. B is the most dangerous. So just avoid between 10 a.m. after 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You avoid as minimize your exposure, and that will help you to reduce uh, your exposure to uh, ultraviolet radiation. X magnetic or or geomagnetic field. The core of the heart has a magnet that radiates out. Geologists have found out that the, there is serious reduction in the geomagnetic field of the heart. What does this geomagnetic field, what does it do? What does it do? You know what it does? It reflects dangerous rays, co cosmic rays, coming from outer space to land on us. But when there's a reduction, this cosmic ray then will be actually impacting on our lives, impacting on our health, coupled with the reduction of the ozone layer. Ozone layer, one of the major things ozone layer does as well is to prevent dangerous cosmic rays, the so-called solar wind. Solar wind are uh, charged particles coming from the sun to the earth's surface. Mag both the mag geomagnetic field and the ozone layer air pulse from coming into the A lot of those days are actually now impacting on lives. Let us use phones judiciously. Let us minimize our. a month that vehicle will break down actually fast you know fasting fasting means that just uh by All right, Professor Oshinabe will be joining us, I'm sure, in a moment. It looks like he had a little challenge with his network, but I know he'll be right back. My goodness, have we all learned something? If you've learned something, put a number 10 in the chat. I am learning and learning and writing and writing. So this has been fantastic. Just a reminder, too, that at the end of the lecture, which won't be too long now, we're going to actually... Um, uh, have Q&A, so you can type your questions. If you have any questions at all, type them into the question and answer section. That will help us to keep them organized there. And then we'll be taking questions for Professor Oshinabe. But this has gone so quickly. Um, the, the, the material, it's, it's amazing, incredible. And every slide could be its own lecture in and of itself. So it's really, really been fantastic. And I know that so many of you are uh, wanting to watch again, want to uh, learn again. And I believe that the YouTube uh, lecture that is um, currently also streaming live will be kept up. And so uh, for those that missed it, for those that want to watch again to catch a key point or two, uh, we should be able to keep the YouTube link up. Um, so we'll, um, we'll ask that question at the end as well. Wow, fantastic. So I know that Prof will be will be joining us. Uh, I'm sure he's just getting his internet back in order and uh, coming right back to us. Very, very fantastic. I'm seeing, so, I'm seeing so many tens. All right, good. Uh, Dr. Eferi, did you have something you wanted to share? Yeah, yes. Uh, thank you, Anne. Uh, everybody is welcome and acknowledged, but I want to especially acknowledge the presence of some persons. Uh, we have with us uh, Professor Francis Duru, uh, not in the particular order, just in order in which they are listed. Um, we have Professor Kimbo is here with us. We have Professor Lufu Milola Adeyemi. We have Professor Kali Adekoya. 
We also have the compliment of Professor Paula Joku, uh, the head of the uh, Visa Me Department. We have Ola De Pepo, or Labisi, a chief medical uh, laboratory scientist of the University of Lagos, at the College of Medicine. Okay, then we have um, um, also very specially, let me acknowledge, uh, I didn't know that she had joined, uh, Professor Bola Obo, the Deputy Vice Chancellor academics and research of the University of Lagos. Um, we also have um, uh, Professor Mike Adebamo, who is the Executive Secretary of the University of Lagos Business School. Uh, then we have uh, Professor Mokololola Olushaki, uh, the Media Past Director of Academic Planning of the University of Lagos. Uh, we have, uh, where's I think uh, that's all to be acknowledged for now. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And again, you all acknowledge and you're welcome. Oh, we have, we now have also a European uniform, uh, Professor Yichide Zahed, uh, the Liberian, a uh, member of top management of uh, the university and the Liberian of the University of Lagos. You're welcome, madam. So we are sure Professor Oshunubi will join us very soon. As have been announced, uh, all your questions are being collated and uh, they are going to be asked on your behalf uh, shortly after the lecture is ended. Wonderful. We have Mrs. Oshinabi, who's just checking on our amazing prof. You know, he's given us so much value today. Very, very uh, incredible value. We've all learned so much. And um, I'm telling you, there's so many nuggets here that um, that I am, I am hearing, I'm writing down. In fact, I'm doing a health program this afternoon. I only wish I could fly prof into Nairobi to deliver all of this uh, fantastic, fantastic information to our guests here. Great, great. All right. Uh, Dr. Eferi, I think there's someone else that we would like to acknowledge. You can go ahead, please, sir. Okay, uh, known to, uh, uh, none now, no additional person to be acknowledged, but everybody is acknowledged. Um, I want to, uh, I don't know, but I don't know whether um, a Professor Rashid Kola Ujikutu, the Pro Chancellor of Lagos State University of Science, Lagos State University of Science, I think, is with us, as well as uh, the distinguished, um, the distinguished Senator uh, Musilu Obanikoro. If any of you is available, just say hello to us. Ah, uh, okay. One thing that I have seen in our attendees is that um, we have so many esteemed guests with us today, so many Absolutely. professors, so many, mm. um, you know, <laughs> executives. Mm. It's uh, it's really incredible. So many doctors. So it's really been an amazing, amazing program so far. And uh, my goodness, I feel like the um, the little baby here on the block <laughs> uh, among such distinguished guests and uh, and esteemed attendees. So wonderful. Wonderful. We, we also have we also we also have uh, Comrade Olumide Oluwa Shugu, uh, General Secretary, University of Lagos Senior Staff Club. Uh, you are welcome. Are you acknowledged? Wonderful. Wonderful. We 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 so have, Thank you for your. We have. We 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 have. Uh, we also have uh, Professor Shola uh, Fajana, who is the Vice Chancellor of the National University of Lesotho. Wow, and I know we have guests from the United States. We have uh, guests here in Kenya. I'm here with some colleagues who are listening intently. We have amazing guests from Nigeria and, and so many countries around the world who want to honor and celebrate Professor Oshinabi on his, on his 60th birthday milestone. 
So it's really been an incredible program. Thank you for your patience, everyone. I know that we, we need to hear the end of this lecture. This has really been incredible. So uh, just hold tight for another moment or two, and uh, we'll check on him and be right back. So I, I acknowledge from the, from the lecture so far, uh, that there is something for everyone, um, especially uh, as I look at the checklist of what to do uh, in order that we may live well, live long and not die in living costs. Oh, cost is mentioned, living well is mentioned. I'm told that Professor Shunubi is a professor of the living and the dead. So he can tell what we kill someone and he can also, also tell what killed somebody. So I think that's why they refer to him as Professor of the living and the dead. And there's something for everybody here. I, I was up for me, I fall short of uh, what is required uh, uh, and I need a lifetime modification. I'm just looking at the checklist. Uh, for many of us, I think uh, there'll be need to for some form of life, lifetime modification. Because if you don't drink alcohol, you don't smoke, I don't know if you drink uh, four liters of water a day. I don't. And I think that uh, that's an area uh, in which we should do some modification. Uh, we are waiting for Professor Shinobi. Uh, we are checking on him, and I'm very sure he will join us soon. Wonderful. I see Professor James is, is uh, dialing in from Namibia. Um, Professor James, can you retype your question into the question and answer section on your Zoom controls? And that way, once Prof is back, uh, we'll be able to answer the question directly for you, sir. Thank you so very much. That would be fantastic. All right, we'll check on Prof and then we will get uh, right back. I know we had uh, a question or two about the presentation. I'm not sure that Prof would share uh, the slides, but I believe the YouTube a link that we, we shared in the invitation will remain live. And so that anyone who wants to view the presentation again uh, can certainly do that. And what we'll also uh, ask about is if there can be maybe a shortened version of that presentation just with the lecture components, we can edit it and then get that lecture component up and running so that people can listen to it and uh, just have that uh, tight lecture part of the program without some of the other uh, added comments. All right, fantastic. So just give so us a minute here. Let yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just, just, and I just, I just want to acknowledge also the presence of uh, uh, Professor Abbott Oikelome, I hope I got that right. Uh, we also have Professor Amuda, Director of CITS. Um, the, that, that's what I have now. Again, everyone is acknowledged and everyone is welcome. Okay, we have great news. We have Prof back on the line with us. Wonderful, wonderful, Professor Oshinabi. We've been uh, we've been we've been just working on uh, acknowledging some of the many esteemed guests who are here with us today. We're so happy to have you back, sir. And uh, we are dying to hear the last, not, not literally dying, of course, we don't want to be the corpse, but we are, we are very eagerly awaiting to hear the last of your lecture, and then we have some questions lined up as well. So, Prof, if you want to go ahead and share your screen again, then we will go ahead and uh, start. You need to so, well, allow me to... Video. Yes. Uh, okay. I I think I think you might have to if you have another device in the same room, uh, perhaps your wife or anyone else, you'll have to uh, turn that device's audio off or have the other uh, device turned off if that's possible. Uh, anyway, can you hear me? Yes, we certainly can, sir. Okay, let me just continue ahead so that 
I will share my slide after, please. So save time, please. Okay, fantastic. Yes, let's go ahead. That would be wonderful. But while you, the technical uh, harms can see, they can enable my video, but no problem. Let me just go ahead. So I was talk sorry for the... Um, okay, I was talking about fasting. I said, oh, fasting as now, we have now recognized fasting as major, major factor in having good health. So it is important that we spend at least 18 hours in a day once a week. Uh, and data before us have shown clearly uh, that people who fast tend to have not just good life expectancy, they experience better quality of life as well. Then the next thing is about safe living. On, uh, in our homes alone, home accidents claim over 600,000 every year, over 600,000 every year. So, um, and over 1.3 million people are killed on our roads alone. Over 700 people die of, uh, of suicide every year. So this, uh, unfortunately, a lot of us have been focusing on other major ailments like diabetes. There are so many things in this world that kill people more than diabetes, roads together with suicide and together with home accidents. These are a lot of, a lot of numbers that we can actually slow down. Temperance, moderation, number 12. It is important that we do everything in moderation. Yes, it is important. We must try as much as possible to have self-control in whatever we do. Number 13, I call this love, association, and relationship. Ladies and gentlemen, if you cannot maintain good relationship with people, you have, uh, it is regarded, it is, we now regard it as a health challenge, inability to maintain love relationship persistently, chronically, perennially, it is a disease entity. And it is so much, it is, so, it, is, it is to be treated as such. For example, mere hugging, mere kissing, we release oxytocin, and oxytocin has been known uh, to help mood, to help even re in the reduction of stress hormones. Dopamine, when you release it, it makes you feel so good, makes you feel so bright. So if, and these are the uh, hormones that are secreted when you are, you are in good relationship. Never hold enmity, never hold malice against people. People who hold enmity cannot be in good spirit, neither can they be in good health. So it is absolutely important for us to note this. Number 14, mindset. Ladies and gentlemen, in the human body, in the, the, the mindset is like, let's take the mindset as the software of the brain. What you can see, the brain, the spinal cord, all those things, let us take them as the, ad, as the hardware. So the software controls the hardware, what the hardware does. So that is why the mind is so important. In the, in the brain, for example, we have, we, now, we, we have not counted, we have over a hundred billion of neurons in the brain alone. And each neuron makes at least 10 to 15,000 synapses connection with other neurons, meaning that there are a total of about 1,000 trillion, that is one quadrillion of connections, one quadrillion of synapses, one quadrillion of interwingling, intermingling of cells in your brain. So your brain is so powerful. Your brain sends out energy. What you think about is what you get. So you must continually Tell this your software, this your mind that look, it is you've got to have perfect. Health. So you can control a lot of things with your mind because the conscious mind eventually controls the subconscious. And unfortunately, unfortunately, with over 70 to 90 percent of our everyday function will come from the subconsciousness of our mind. So it is so important that we get our mind very clearly 
Depression is avoidable. Depression is preventable. Suicide is, they are preventable. They are avoidable. The worst scenario, ladies and gentlemen, if no one encourages you, please encourage yourself. Recruit for yourself inner support, inner zeal. He, you can do it. You are created a healing machine. You are created to, in self-renewal. You are created in self-rejuvenation. You can do it. Let nobody tell you otherwise. That's the worst scenario, ladies and gentlemen. If no one encourages you, please encourage yourself. You can do it. Number 15, cheerfulness. You need to smile. You need to laugh. You need to make jokes. It is not every day you frown your face. I look at the mirror and tell yourself, Abraham, you are not smiling enough. You are not laughing enough. Come on, smile. Come on, laugh. When you see, when you smile, you see what you do when you laugh. You secret endorphins. Endorphins are secreted almost thirty percent higher than when you don't smile. What? What do endorphins, what do they do? They are secreted from the brain. They, they, they are natural painkiller. They kill the pains in you. No, they make you feel happy. And when you smile consciously and it becomes subconscious in you, you, you'll, be, you'll be releasing good doses of endorphins, higher levels of life satisfaction, and lower levels of depression and anxiety is the result. Ladies and gentlemen, when you laugh, when you smile, your immune system is strengthened. You have even lower blood pressure. These have been well documented in literature, in science. It, it also improves cognitive function, including memory. Can you imagine smiling, laughing, making jokes, be humorous, okay? They, and these are the things that are also necessary for higher functions in problem solving, in creativity. If you want to be an innovator, innovator is not just simply because you are seeing, sitting in the lab. No, it's more than that. And lastly, under cheerfulness, let us be grateful. Let us show gratitude what you are doing. Let's show gratitude. Let us be grateful for where you are today. It could have been worse. If you look at it, you are not even at the bottom. You, are, you may be in the middle, but you are not at the, at the lowest rung of the ladder, ladies and gentlemen. Be cheerful. Meditation, that is number 16. You've got to learn to meditate. You've got to learn to stay on your own few minutes in a day and in, in read introspection, okay? Meditation can increase the activity of the prefrontal lobe cortex. That is the science behind pre-medication. And you need the prefrontal lobe cortex activity for executive function, for decision making. That is you've got to put into action your prefrontal lobe. If your prefrontal cortex is not working optimally, it's almost impossible to exhibit good decision. It's almost impossible for you to have good executive function. It's almost impossible for you to problem solve. So you've just got to find time to meditate every day. Recreation and relaxation, hobbies, sports, listening to music, these are wonderful way of promoting wellness, of promoting memory, of promoting concentration, of promoting problem solving. So you can see it is not just mere absence of disease. You can do a lot of it. You can reprogram that your body. You can reprogram that your gene. You can reprogram that yourself. You can do all these things on your own. Recreation, relaxation. You must find time for recreation. You must find. And number 18, almost finding enough. Physical activity. Physical activity. I do minimum of one hour of walking every blessed day. It is a must. It is sacrosanct. You must do it. By mere not exercising is capable of reducing. Not exercising is capable of reducing your lifespan by as, as many as seven years. Yes, by as many as seven years is capable of of doing that. So you've just got to find a way of increasing your physical activity. This is very, very important. It is important for your health. It is important, it is important in terms of reduction of uh, stress on your, uh, on your health. It is also very important in terms of reduction of the incidence of cardiovascular disease, of diabetes, of hypertension, of stroke, so a lot of things, a lot of uh, benefits 
from having physical activity. Physical activities have been documented in literature as well to be very vital in the prevention of cancer. This is very interesting. Regular activity plays an important role in helping to maintain a healthy body weight as well. Excess body weight increases the amount of estrogens, androgens, insulin, all of which actually promotes um, tumor growth. So it is important you do, you do that, please. Exercise, very important. So then under exercise, I must make mention of the soleus push-up. What, what do I mean by soleus push-up? Soleus push-up, you raise up your, most of us spend six to eight hours of our life every day sitting down. All what you need to do, sit down on your toe, then put your toe down and make sure that your knee is at the right angle position and then gently raise it up, put it down, put it down as if you are tiptoeing under your table. That as the you are giving yourself the opportunity to reduce your blood sugar by as much as 52%. You are giving yourself the opportunity of reducing your insulin level by as much as 60%. And when you take all this in totality, you are you are saving two things. Let me tell you a lot of this you are doing. Number one, you are saving yourself from being deep vein thrombosis. You are saving yourself death as well from cancers because all over 16 cell types of cancers have been implicated in hyperinsulinemia. That That is high levels of insulin in the body has been implicated in several cancers. And I told you earlier on that half of the world are at risk of developing cancer. Four billion people are at the risk of developing cancer in the world. So it is important you use the soleus pump to recruit the soleus muscle so that the soleus muscle can make use of the sugar and the lipids in your blood. Another thing that you get from the soleus pump is that it helps you to reduce cholesterol level. Okay, 4.4 million people worldwide, 4.4 million people worldwide die annually from diseases that are related to um, uh, to high level of either bad cholesterol or triglyceride. And one in four deaths in the world, one in four deaths is actually due to uh, thrombosis, blood clots. So this soleus pump does a lot of things for you. So you need to recruit it. You need to do it regularly, just like you do your normal exercise. That doesn't say that you should not do your normal exercise, please. Music, number 19, I'm running up. I'm going to number 21. Uh, no, music, 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 music is very important for your health. You either, you can, music comes in forms of you playing instrument, you singing, okay, you dancing, all these are very important to yourself. People who sing, who dance, okay, uh, who do instruments, they secrete a lot of more antibodies than those who do not. They, they secrete a lot of more of uh, dopamine than those who do not. So it is important that we enrich ourselves with music, okay? Either we dance to music, we, uh, we play music, or we sing, it is so important. And a lot of studies have been done. I remember several years ago, a study was done. Uh, some, some mice were put in, in, inside a maze. They are supposed to locate, uh, they are supposed to locate food at the end of the maze. One group, nice music, like Anded, like Mozart, okay, was played to one group. Another group never had music. That group that had the music, they were able to navigate their way in due time, okay, and to the food. And they, they, they were well-fed, they were healthy. Unlike the other group, they were not able to navigate their ways through the maze. Eventually, they die within the maze. Guess what? So, surgery was done. Their brains were were uh, were harvested. They, we discovered they, the scientists discovered that in the brain they actually develop tumors. Some of them develop the hippocampus tumor, and so this is so important that the music is so important. We underestimate the importance of music to our good health in terms of self-esteem, in terms of confidence, in terms of social ease, in terms of posture, in terms of psychological behavior. So music is so important. These have been well documented in relation a lot of scientists, especially in um, Einstein aging studies that have been done a lot in, in Germany. These are well documented in literature. Number 20, I'll not round it up. You remember that I told you there is 
something in your body that you produce naturally that actually almost parallels the reduction in the telomeres that you are having. As I said here, the telomeres are actually the tail ends of all your chromosomes in your body. Yes, they are the tail ends. The shorter the, the, your telomeres are, they actually protect the coding area of the chromosomes. So the shorter the telomeres are, the lower your lively, uh, your life expectancy, the lower the, the quality of your life. This has been well documented in literature. So the, the sending sense, we now regard sending sense resulting for likely from the short, the shorting uh, of your telomeres. But something parallels the telomeres also in your body. And that is intracellular glutathione. This glutathione that God has naturally based out upon you, that's created you with. As you go down to, as you age, by the time you are 20, it begins to go down. By the time you are 50, 60, you have lost over half of your glutathione level. So you've got to find a natural way of raising your glutathione. So it is important. And lastly, ladies and gentlemen, um, health checks. Find time to do health check. Mental health check is very important. No, don't just focus on physical. Also focus on psychological health and check all your numbers. The blood pressure, the blood sugar, the lipids, the weight, PSA, some people blood counts, and routinely do a self-assessment. And in conclusion, the human body can be reprogrammed to heal itself. That is what it has been designed to do. The primary goal is prevention of diseases and early detection. Many chronic diseases share common risk factors, and all of these states can also be prevented or treated more effectively if you adhere to my 21 item prescription. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no substitute for good health. Health is our greatest possession. We have a duty to procure, to protect, and preserve it. Our future depends on maintaining a sound mind in a healthy body, because a sound mind in a sick body is a prison for the soul and mind. May every one of us enjoy long life and perfect health to match. I love you all. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, there are a few questions for you to answer, but before then, I want to quickly acknowledge uh, the presence of Professor Solomon uh, Kiboye. He's been here with us from um, the beginning. We have Professor Isambo. We have Professor Joy Ukuzo. We also have uh, the compliment of uh, Professor Adelaja Ojukoya. We have Professor James Katende. And then we have Professor Kemi Odukoya. You are welcome. Now, the question and answer session will be coordinated by uh, Anne Tumbo and uh, Dr. Mary Akiemi. Um, over to you now. Your questions will be collated and they are going to be asked on your behalf. And Prof is going to provide answers to them. Yes, Anne, go ahead. Okay, great. You? Yes. Yeah. Yes, great. Um, uh, all right, I'll, I'll start with the first couple of questions and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Mary. So we've, we've got a number of questions and um, let me just see here. So we have from uh, OEMI, we have a highly informative presentation. Is daily consumption of smoked meat, things like Asian barbecue, turkey, et cetera, healthy for adults above 50 years? And then we also had another question from Professor James of Namibia, similar question where um, you hear things that eggs are good for you, eggs are bad for you, you hear conflicting ideas about nutrition. And so what do you make of that, Prof? What would you say about you know, some of the conflicting things you might hear about eggs and other things? So uh, smoked meats and then just generally uh, conflicting ideas about nutrition, good for you, bad for you. Over to you, Prof. Yeah, th th thank you. Though I didn't hear the second one very well, but I can, I had the first one as soon and smoke fish and things like that. Yes, number one, we have to realize that uh, there are two things here about smoke fish. One is that you need a if it reaches a particular temperature, 
the fats within the fish, they begin to form, uh, uh, they, they begin, to, they, they, some reactions actually take place and form, I don't want to go into the biochemistry, then giving nit nitrates. These nitrates are being implicated in cancer. So it, what it means basically is that you eat to a temperature that is enough to kill germs, but not enough to generate nitrites. So usually you begin to generate nitrites at a temperature of about 200, two, over 200 degrees centigrade. So you just want to ensure, for example, that you begin to bring it down. For example, by eating to about 120 degrees centigrade, not just fish alone, but when you eat to about 120 degrees centigrade, aflatoxin in, in, in nuts generally, you kill them. But so you don't want to increase beyond 120 for, for example, in terms of uh, nuts. But in terms of fish, you don't want to go beyond 200 degrees centigrade. That is the idea. Thank you. I, I, I thank didn't you, hear thank the, you, second the second question very well. That's okay. The second question was from Professor James Katende of Namibia, and he says, man is what he eats. Please say something about the persistent contradictions about nutrition. For example, some say eggs are bad and others say they are essential. <laughs> okay. You see, yes. Let me, let me say, uh, I, I will, there is, well, if you call it contradiction, science can be also be funny. Let me tell you, let me go into the memory lane on that. 50, 60, 70 years ago, the, study, the studies then confirmed that you don't actually need supplements. That was true. That was then. 50 years ago, it was almost like a crime as medical doctors for us to prescribe supplement. But Re result now result of data massive data are now telling us that in this present day world we actually need supplements so in terms of um egg is moderation for example the white part of the egg is still very good white part of the egg and let me tell you why people talk about why egg is to be taken in limited quantity we have omega i want you to follow me now we have omega-3, 5, 7, that are very good. All these three omega oils, they are anti-inflammatory agents. However, omega-6 is pro-inflammatory agent. So omega-6 is what you actually find in egg. And that is why we need to take egg in limited quantity. That is the reason, actually. Especially the yellow part of the egg because of omega-6, which is pro-inflammatory in nature. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. And still on what we put into our mouths, um, we have another question here, and I'm still piggybacking on the question on inflammatory foods and anti-inflammatory foods. So we have a question here from Temito Badmas. Tomatoes were, were mentioned as anti-inflammatory foods. In this part of the world, we take more of processed tomatoes, which would have destroyed some of the useful components. Would you advise that we take more raw tomatoes, that is, eat tomatoes whole? Well, I will thank you. I will tell you what I do. I eat raw tomatoes. Raw. I eat raw tomatoes every single day. Raw ones. You know, and of course, I quite agree there are challenges now because of chemicals used. You can only be sure of what you have planted yourself. So you must also find a way of, uh, like now, in this, these days now, you put apples on your table. They can, apples can be there for almost two weeks without getting back, and you are happy with that. No, it's not something uh, you should be happy about. It's something that you should be condemned because it's, it, it actually means that such apples have actually been chemicalized to prevent them uh, uh, from going back as soon as possible. The same thing with, with, with bread, in loaves of bread, you put them on the table, they are there for, for days and you're happy. No, it means that they have been chemicalized. So, but I prefer raw tomato, uh, that's a nutshell. Tomato is really very good anti-inflammatory anti agent because it contains a lot of lycopene and this is this has been very documented in literature. So the idea is that you eat as many as 
as possible, different varieties in terms of, you will judge it from their colors alone, take different colors. That is the uh, idea thing. And we avoid, uh, we have possible, like I said, moderation is one of the things in health that you need to adhere to. Moderation in everything. You know, if you drink too much water, it can also be bad. Even though your uh, 65 to 70% of your body weight is actually water. Okay, if you take too much of water, that's those cells can actually die of, of, of drowning, you know. So everything in moderation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. And we have a number of questions about food, but here is a very interesting one that I think you should address. So, Prof, may God bless you for this. Is ginger good for the body? I'm on the big side and I have a I have little or no time to exercise enough to stay fit. Um, I ran into a friend who used to be big too. She's lost a lot of weight and is now looking good. I asked what she used and she said she's on a ginger diet. Does this work? Please advise. Hello? Hello yeah, Paul. thank you. To start with, weight management is one of the most difficult things for us in medicine. That is the, that's the ad basis. Number two, Oh, there is no one strategy fitting all for all. Everybody will have different strategy, but there are basic things. For example, what you want to achieve in weight, in, in weight reduction is to ensure that you utilize more energy than what you are taking because your food is converted to energy. So you must be used. So it means you must limit your food intake to start with and you must increase your energy expenditure. You cannot lose weight without losing, without cutting down on your diet and then without exercising. No, it is not even healthy for you. So in terms of ginger, we don't have enough data to support to support that. But what we, not, what we know is that there is a switch, a metabolic switch in the human body. That metabolic switch is anti-monophosphate kinase switch in the human body, okay? That switch, if it is working normally, you are supposed to lose weight normally. We need to exercise, eat food, and things like that. But once that switch is not working optimally, okay, you can use certain oh, food items to try to push up the switch to work normally so that with little food you are eating, you are utilizing it very well, you can also reduce cravings with, with that. So that is also important things for you to look at. So you can uh, discuss with meet that after the after the seminar it's not something we can uh talk at, at length yet thank you um great i i have a couple of questions here one i'm very interested in because um we have a question about what temperature of water is good to drink um uh, for me i love to drink cold water but i know i've heard that maybe that's not the best for me and then another uh another um program about Another question rather about exercise and is going for an hour's walk enough or do we need to include going to the gym or jogging or other types of exercise as well? So I'll leave you with those two questions, one about water and one about exercise. Yeah, thank you. Y yes, my idea is that one, you have to also look at your convenience and your environment. If I'm living in a very hot environment, the truth is that uh, it may be difficult for you to take hot water. But I take warm water. I don't take cold water. I take warm. I take warm water. That's what I do. However, uh, the important thing is that you should take water. However, when you want to sleep, we advise you should take. Maybe you should prefer give preference to warm water give preference to, to warm water. And then in terms of uh, exercise, it is what works best for you. For example, uh, you don't have, I, I, don't, I don't use the gym. I have the treadmill, I walk around my house, you know? So you, can, you don't have to go to the gym. You can do structured exercise even on, on, on your own, okay? While I'm not spoiling business for people who have gyms, please, you can still, uh, you die. So if you, if you are going for the Olympics, you may need to have to go to the, to the gym, but I'm not going for the Olympics. So uh, I use uh, my house as my own gym, okay? And let me also say that, Walking is exercise, I hope you know, it's activity. Walking alone. If you walk 60 minutes, 
You know, 60 minutes of walking is better than you not doing anything at all. Even 30 minutes of walking a day, 20 minutes. Research have documented that 20 minutes of walking alone every day, or in totality, about 150 minutes of exercise per week is actually healthy for you as well. So, but the more exercise you do, and then for example, if somebody is having, uh, is having a heart condition, I will not want that person to do uh, so much strenuous exercise, but that person will still have to do some walking as well. So it is important that we know this. Exercise is actually managed, it's actually, there is prescription for exercise, by the way, just like you prescribe drugs, there is prescription for it. The, there are doses of exercise that we meet the demand of every one of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. I'm gonna bring us back to the conversation on food. Someone wants to know, um, for adults, taking milk, how good or how bad? Arthritis pain, pains, what are the antidotes? And then there's another question that says, uh, is daily consumption of tea or vegetables good for the health? And there's a bit of background to that question where there's a plant called Hospital too far, or Iano Ipaya in Yoruba language, and chaya leaves. So it's taking too much of is how much of this is good, and is daily consumption good, and also is milk good for adults, and um, what are the antidotes for arthritis pain? Thank you, Prof. Hello, I I hope I was able to pick. Uh, the question, but I, I thought I had, well, let me, I had about tea or so. Yes, is that correct? Yes. Um, uh, one, uh, one thing about tea, tea is very good for the body. However, is, there's one thing about green tea. I take green tea every day, but green tea is not something you need to take maybe three, four times a day. The simple reason why we are saying tea should be taken cautiously is that tea, is one is one of the plants in the world that has the greatest amount of aluminium. The leaf, the plant leaf has a propensity to uptake high to, to, to uptake aluminium. Sorry, green green tea again. Remember, I said in my presentation, aluminium is the third commonest element in the world in the earth crust. Number one, the commonest is oxygen. Number two is silicon. Number three is aluminum. So unfortunately, the, the green tea plant has very so much propensity to uptake aluminum a lot. So green tea is not something you will be taking, for example, morning, afternoon, evening. It's something you, especially if you are not too sure of your intracellular glutathione. So it is important that you actually be cautious of, uh, of, of green tea. I don't know, you mentioned another plant or so. It was milk. Um, is milk good or bad for adults? And um, what are the antidotes of arthritis pains? Can you speak louder? Sorry, hello, is it, bet is it better? Can you hear me better now, Prof? I can hear you now, yeah. Uh -huh. So um, the other question was, is milk good or bad for adults? And okay, what okay. for arthritis pain? This is very interesting question about milk. The interesting thing about question, we are now beginning to suspect again that, that really the animal milk is not actually meant for adults is, and that is the reason why a lot of people actually react to animal milk, okay? In the very, very young, you know, in the infants, they still have the enzymes to actually metabolize animal milk. But unfortunately, as you grow older, you begin to lose that ability you know, and you, what I'm also going to tell you is that flatulence is actually, you, 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 you fat because you are not metabolizing those things. It's actually an evidence that some form of indigestion has taken place. So really make, if you look at it, make, uh, animal milk is not actually meant for adults, 
Okay, of course, a lot of us will take milk. But so what do you take now? Almond milk, okay, milk made from, you know, if you don't react to soy milk, some people react to that as well. So it is important that we know this. If you can, if you can avoid milk as an adult, every one of us will love to have cream in our tea, we love to have in our coffee, but let's in moderation, please, in moderation. I always want to run away from the word now, avoid. Avoidance, it's, it's gonna, it puts people, so I need to be also be very careful. Because you, sometimes you don't want to, uh, you want you want to help people to off it, uh, to win people off gradually. That is the idea. Thank you. So, Prof, we have a question here about wheat as well. Is wheat a known sample? About, about what? About wheat. About wheat. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That, that's another interesting. You see, let me tell you, every plant, everything God has created in this world has devised ways of perpetrating themselves in this world to protect themselves. Every plant has something in them to protect them from predators. Who are the predators of plants? You and I, we are predators of plants. So they also, the wheat is so unique. In the germs of, of, um, of wheat, we have a substance in high quantity known as lectin. One of my PhD students works on lectin. She's on this call, Dr. Inio Koko. She is a senior lecturer in anatomy now. She worked on lectin. You know, lectin is very, very, can be very dangerous. It permeates the intestinal mucosa and causes a lot of damages. So sometimes when you prescribe whole wheat bread, whole wheat of this, whole wheat of that, it means that you have included the jam. No, the jam part, germinal part of the wheat in it that has a lot of lectin in it. So it can, if it is not carefully managed, you may be doing more damage. And that is why, again, it is in moderation. I take whole wheat bread, but it is in moderation. You know, So it is important that we, we, are, we are aware that you, because you want somebody to have enough fibers, you want, you want uh, so, some moderation in terms of glucose level, you don't introduce some other bad elements in the body. So this is also significant that we do that in moderation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, I know we still have a lot of questions, but we're 15 minutes beyond time and we do apologize for that. So um, I'm going to push this back to um, Dr. Ifere and I must apologize if your question has not been answered. I'm sure Prof will drop his email address in the chat room so that you can contact him directly. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Oshunubi. Uh, we appreciate the fact that uh, you have used your, the occasion of your birthday to offer the free, uh, free webinar. Um, professor of Anatomy, uh, Professor of the Living and the Dead, uh, Jack of Many Trades, Master of Many Trades. Uh, and I agree with that because uh, when you were executive director of the business school, you set a record that is difficult to beat. And uh, we all uh, sincerely appreciate uh, who you are. You are a blessing to many. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I want to call on uh, the distinguished Professor Vajde Allah to give, uh, the chairman of the occasion to give uh, his closing remarks. Dr. Ferry, I think the chairman has to be brought into the uh, into a panelist, please. Uh, okay, can somebody move him in? Because I spoke to him and he's ready with the closing remarks. Or allow him to uh, allow him to speak. Just enable it. He's been promoted to panelist. Okay. Mm. Okay, yes, the chairman is on now. Uh, chairman, please, your, your... we're ready for your closing remarks. 
Uh, thank you. Somebody <clears throat> needs to enable my video, or you don't want to see my face? <laughs> we want to see your face. Uh, it will be enabled now. Uh, you cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. So, Prof, Professor Oshinabe, if you can enable the video. Well, or maybe I should just carry on. But I thought um, I want uh, Abraham to see my face. And we all want to see your I'm, face. I'm in an excited mood. Uh, still on, <clears throat> unable to connect by video. But to save time, can I just carry on? And if the video comes on, then we will uh, deal with that. We want to say that it's been, yeah, thank you. We want to say that it's been a great lecture. We want to say, appreciate you, uh, Ibram. Uh, that's as expected. And it's very clear that uh, you are the jack of all trades, but master of all. Master of health issues, master of living well, master of being able to live long, and not die a living corpse. Uh, that is, uh, we are grateful because we, we, from this program, I'm sure everybody who listened in, who joined, must have learned a few things about reprogramming and resetting your body on the path to good health. We all need good health. The sound mind is the sound body is uh, the element of human living. And you've showed us that our habits, can indeed possibly influence outcomes that we, we get. Uh, the habits are very important. And uh, particularly doing everything in moderation, like you, you emphasized. People say, some say eat eggs, some say don't eat eggs. You've told us that the important thing is to do everything in moderation. And you've proven that uh, you've given us critical tips on what we can do on our own to live a healthy life. Uh, and you, you relied on results of research. I'm sure this is from wide reading that you, you, you are able to come up with all this because I do know that it's not as if you've carried out research on all of it, but you've taken interest in on healthy living, you've taken interest in living well, and you have uh, assisted us, assisted all of us who are listeners on how we can live well, how we can reprogram our living style to, to ensure that we, we, um, we live well and we live long and we don't die a living corpse. And we pray that we won't die a living corpse. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shinobi. Congratulations and congratulations once again. Uh, Thank you, sir. You continue, you continue to make us proud. Uh, they were you or she will be triple A for sure. Thank you, sir. Continue to work stronger and stronger, and uh, yeah. we look forward to your 70. Maybe yeah. at your 70 again, you will do another webinar like this. Yeah. We look forward yeah. to your 80, we look forward to your 90. Yeah. And as I said, because you are a member of the Max team, we look forward to your becoming 120. We just Amen. had that the chairman of the chairman of the Max team is 97 this year or something like that. <laughs> so with that, we are sure that our own Abraham or Shinubi is heading for 120. Uh, if God if the Lord tires in coming back. And so we wish you well. And congratulations. Uh, and uh, greetings to Anne. Anne, you you you've uh, anchored very well. We appreciate you. Also to Dr. Eferi. If Dr. Eferi, of course, experienced uh, corporate guru, and you, you showed it again today. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining, and I wish everybody well. Thank you. Uh, thank you very thank much, you. Uh, uh, Chairman. Um, let me uh, allow me to thank God for the gift of Professor Shinobi to, to the world. And of course, we should thank your family. Uh, we should show gratitude to your family for allowing you to share your time 
uh, with so many people. And I want to thank my co-panelists and uh, moderator for, for the job we have done. I especially want to thank all attendees uh, for spending your time uh, with us to celebrate a great man. Uh, I want to advise that we apply the lessons of this webinar so that we can appropriate the benefits that uh, it, uh, it was intended to give. Thank you very much. Have a very good day. Wow, what a time to be alive. You're one of those souls that uh, everybody appreciates. You're an incredible human being, someone I love and admire so, so, so much. You've impacted me and the lives of so many thousands of people in a great way. You've been a father, a mentor, a teacher to me. I am so grateful for all you've done. You've been awesome, you've been amazing. Your dedication, your commitment, your hard work. We see all of these and we don't take them for granted. To thank you for helping educate health professionals on the importance of the town and the rival scene technology. Herb's dream uh, over a decade ago was to have rival scene available around the world uh, during his lifetime. Uh, his dream uh, has come true, and your efforts have made this possible. As a basic science researcher, his only goal was to improve human health by his research on glutathione supplementation. And your research and publications on the rival scene technology has helped validate the science. Always a great time working with you and spreading the good word about ribozine, but this is your day, so I'm drinking this infused to you. Wanted to share with you that we love you, we appreciate you, and everything you do for everyone. We love you a bunch. Can't wait to see you. I love you. I appreciate you. Oh, bro, you are still the youngest, bro, I know. We love you so much. We love and appreciate all the energy, all the time, and all yourself that you have put out into the betterment of the world. Thank you for being a mentor. Thank you for all the amazing things you do for us. May you have all the blessings and the joy and the love that you share with so many. I hope you're having a great, great day. You deserve it. We wish you the very best. Thank you for everything that you do for Max International. On this special day of yours, we say God will bless you. He will increase you, grant you all that your heart truly desires. You will live in health. You will thrive in abundance in Jesus' name. May God bless you and help you make more impact in the world. Prayer is that God continues to pour himself into you, that you continue to age beautifully, graciously, and fruitfully. That even at 90, you'll be giving us those power moves like you're still 18. I just wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Prof, I just wanted to wish you the happiest of 60th birthdays. Happy birthday to you. Hey, hey. Prof. <laughs> Happy birthday, 60th oh, birthday. Oh amazing. my God, you, you look, look amazing. So young. Happy 60th. You're actually three weeks older than me. <laughs> Happy birthday, Prof Oshinubi. Happy birthday, Professor. We wanted to wish you a happy uh, 60th birthday. Herb uh, also has a birthday this month. Will be turning 96 uh, and credits his good health and my mother's good health was also going to be turning 96 this year to rival C. We wish you the very best. Thank you for everything that you do for Max International. Happy birthday from both of us. Happy birthday, Prof. It is your birthday, 16 years old, the youngest professor I know in the whole world. We are so blessed by you, sir. Sorry, excuse me. You say what? T60 60 Sir, ah, how old are you? 60 Ah, I thought you were a teenager all this time <laughs> Where do you get all the energy from? Let me guess Right, we'll see <laughs> Wish you a long life and prosperity in your yesterday Never be better than your tomorrow Happy birthday Happy birthday, Prof. It's your 60th today I'm so grateful to God for bringing this day to pass We love you
Nothing stopped.